Howdy, friends and floor heads. Welcome to Tuesday night superhero time. We're going to be playing Steve Kenson's Icons RPG. It is a really neat system, uh, kind of uh, originally based off of fudge, so it's very rules light. Uh, you're going to find uh, we'll be leaning in more into the RP and the storytelling than the pure mechanics uh, by design. Uh, for those of you that are subscribers to the podcast, Tabletop Talk from Third Floor Wars, episode 142 was last week's episode, and that featured an interview with Steve Kenson. So if you haven't listened to that, I highly recommend it, obviously, because I'm on it. Uh, but Steve was a great guest as well. Uh, the other quick call out is you'll know that we've got uh, two pieces of art for two of our characters. We've got Shrinking Violet's art as well as Mako's art. We've got Ferryman and uh, Jenny Greenteeth on their way, but I want to give a quick shout out to George uh, Marston, who is uh, the artist. If you look in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you can see his Twitter handle, and he is open. Uh, they are open for uh, commissions, so uh, feel free to reach out to them. And uh, uh, the work that uh, they're doing is just incredible. Uh, every time uh, I get a new ping from them, I get all excited. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So now, any other arts you'll see though is from Dan Hauser, who. Uh, uh, did the art for uh, Mr. Kenson in the uh, original book itself. So quick introductions. At the bottom of my screen is a familiar face for those of you that have watched the Star Wars RPs or potentially watched the fear itself. You might have heard this person. So Doug, I want to say hello and thanks for coming, man. Hi, Greg. Thanks for having me back on. What is your number one goal for this run at icons, what would you be happy to see happen at some point in the next several issues? Uh, I just want some classic teen shenanigans, Craig. I don't even care if we turn into superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right above Doug on the screen, we've got my good friend, Jim. Jim is good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. You get to, you get to actually uh, play on the stream and not have to watch the chat, right. which is nice. <laughs> That's true. So how about you, Jim? What is your goal in these next couple issues? What would uh, you like to see happen in our game I, of icons? I definitely want to be superheroes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then right above you is Miss Kimberly. How are you? I'm doing well. This is Miss Kimberly's uh, well second time on the stream because she was here for uh, session zero as we created characters. But this is the first time that we've had a chance to role play together, Kimberly. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm super excited. And I need to know over the next several issues, what are you hoping to see? Oh, I want that teenage melodrama, like 100 percent. Like, let's get Riverdale up in this crap. <laughs> 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 and then just to the left of Kimberly is Kirsten, who's also a new friend and new, relatively new to the stream. So uh, Kirsten, welcome. Hi, glad to be here. Everybody seems cool so far. <laughs> so what is, what is something that would make you happy to see Kirsten in the next couple issues? Uh, well, I don't know how long it's going to be, but I can tell you that my character's campaign for prom queen is going to be starting real early. So <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get started. And I think when we fade in from black, we start with a young girl. And she's maybe about 10 years old. She's got pigtails. And she's looking through racks of comic books inside of a comic book store. And she pulls, a, pulls one up and looks at it and pulls it back down, flips through, flips through, pulls another one up. Finally, she finds on the new issue rack a comic. She grabs it and she runs quickly up to the counter. Now, of course, behind the counter, we've got a nice but pimple-faced young man behind the counter working it. She slides the comic book over the counter with a crumpled dollar bill. In the next panel, we see her in a treehouse. She's got all the doors closed. She's curled up and she just gently pulls out her new comic book from the bag she slowly opens it up to the splash page and we zoom in on that and it shows an aerial shot of a city with the caption welcome to ultra city it's a large coastal city in the southeastern part of the united states and ultra city has everything skyscrapers a downtown an uptown 
the right side, the safe part of the city, the not so safe part of the city. It's got all kinds of different neighborhoods and districts, bustling commerce, and of course, crime. So we turn the page. On the next page, we immediately cut to the exterior of a high school that's been crammed in between the tall buildings of Uptown Ultra City. And there's a sign outside of the high school that reads, Ultra City High, home of the grappling geese. And then below in letters that have been stuck on in the sign, it says, welcome back students. And we can see the kids pouring in to the front door. This is the first day back from summer vacation. We cut to the interior. We see kids running around trying to figure out what their lockers are and get everything situated. We hear the first bell. It's time to get to class. So there's some scrambling and running and slowly kids are starting to find their way into class. And we cut to Miss Hanrahan's AP biology class. We start to see the kids flowing in, finding their desks. Ms. Hanrahan, I'm willing to bet 30 years ago was an amazing teacher. These might not be her best days, but she still loves what she does. There's some rambunctious, some yelling and screaming going on, some paper being thrown across the classroom, but finally things settle down by the time the second bell rings. Ms. Hanrahan walks up to the front of the class Welcome back, students. She's got her glasses down. I see everybody's here. This is period one, AP biology. I know you are just now coming back from your summer vacation. And I would like to just take a moment to talk about it. She starts calling on kids. Some of the students, super anxious to stand up and talk about what they did over summer vacation. Some other students aren't so anxious. She then turns to the third row. Miss Ashley, can you please stand up? Yes, Miss Ashley, yes. You're the only Ashley in the class, please stand up. Oh, like, sorry, I'm used to there being like two or three other Ashleys. Um, hi, how's it going? Good, you Ashley. all know me, I'm Ashley. Uh, so this summer, uh, we actually um, did like, a, like an environmental study, right? So uh, we have um, like a new student with us who, and I, I indicate the gentleman sitting next to me, uh, who, it's very, very tall and very, very skinny. Um, and like, so he's from Wales, right? So we decided what we're gonna do is, or what we were gonna do is go kind of find out about the biology of Wales. Uh, I thought we were talking about the animal, turns out we were talking about the country. So that's what we did for our summer vacation. So you spent your summer vacation, it sounds like doing biology. Yeah, I learned a lot about um, bogs and, uh, and swamps and uh, meadows and yeah, it was great. We'll be studying whales as well. We'll be studying all types of different mammals that are in the sea. Uh, okay. Miss, Miss Jennifer, Miss Jennifer, could you please stand up, please? Miss. Hi. Ms. Hi. Jennifer, and what did you do over the summer, dear? I also went to Wales, uh, and well, I got stuck in the swamp. Oh my, oh, wow. are you okay? Um, Todd uh, rescued me, actually, so that's how we met Todd. And students, you've noticed that we do have an, a new a, a student, an exchange student. Um, it, for some reason, it says here you're a whale. I don't think you are a whale. You seem like a nice boy, though. Uh, so, uh, Todd, um, they forgot the second D on the sheet here. Um, Todd, could you please, please stand up, sir? Yes. Todd will 
stand up, uh, all six foot six of him. And uh, it's one of those desks that's connected to the chair and his hips, like, twist it so it just tips forward and knocks all of his stuff off. So he'll just quickly scramble to try and put stuff back on there. Ah, yes. Hi, I'm Todd. Now, no, Todd, it says you're an exchange student. Where are you from? Well, I went to Wales. I'm from Wales. And, and that's a that's a that's a, a a Wales accent. That that that's an interesting accent. Yes. And and how long will you be here in Ultra City? Uh, for the foreseeable future. Excellent, excellent. And how did you spend your summer, Todd? Well, uh, I'm just going to keep looking at Ashley. Like, I spent a lot of my summer <laughs> He was actually our guide. <laughs> and, and rescuer from Boggs, right? Right, Jennifer? Yes. Yep. He's a hero. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time in the water. Oh, you're, you, you know who else is a swimmer? Uh, uh, Dylan, stand up. Dylan, Dylan. Now, of course, everybody knows Dylan. He is, of course, the junior captain of our swim team. And and uh, Dylan, you also like water, do you not? Absolutely. Uh, this summer, I definitely had to keep my reps up for the pool. Uh, I also took some time in Wales, saw the sights. Uh, they have great locks out there. Uh, we did some climbing, and I met my good buddy Todd here. I think it's wonderful that you all went over to the other side of the ocean and, and did some biology, which should prepare you for today's class. Now, students, I'd like you to go ahead and uh, open up your textbook. Let's start with the preface. And she starts droning. <laughs> As she one at a time is asking different students to read the preface of the AP biology book. While that's happening, we're seeing poor Miss Hanrahan nod off a few times. Um, but then she, as soon as the next student starts reading, she pops up. Now, Todd, you're sitting there, kind of taking it all in. This is not anything you've ever been a part of before, sitting in a classroom. And you feel something kick the back of your chair. Hello? You turn around and you see Mick Eastbrook, the captain of the basketball team. And as soon as you turn around and look at him, he just kind of looks away, looks up, doesn't make eye contact with you. Oh, OK. As soon as you turn back around, you feel another sharp kick. This one a little bit harder. Turn back around and hello. Look, you better look forward, freak. Okay. Look forward and put his hand on the desk. Like, yes, I'm doing the thing. So he turns to his buddy who's sitting next to him and he goes, "See, I told you, Coach is all excited because he's tall, but I can tell he 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 ain't, he ain't good enough to be on the team. There's no way he's gonna make the team. I'll tell you that right now. Watch this. Watch this." And he kicks you again. And this time, Todd, it actually, you have to stop yourself from tipping forward. Well, that was rude. At that point in time, I stand up. And I go to, what's the guy's name again? Uh, <laughs> Mick. Mick, that's right, Mick Westbrook. Yeah, Mick East, Eastbrook, no relation. Eastbrook, I'm sorry, Mick Eastbrook. Uh, uh, and uh, you know what? I, I'm going to say that uh, I am not like Mick. Mick and I dated freshman year, and he's just always been a dick. And I am going to flip his desk to the side with him in it. So you come up to him, and he... He, it's very rare that we see Mick with any kind of look of fear. And it's very possible that only Jennifer can elicit that response for him. <laughs> and Jennifer, you walk up and he looks and he's like, oh, it, it, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And you just flip the desk and he just tumbles over, falls down on the side. 
and the whole classroom erupts in laughter. And I, and I just look at him and I'm like, you don't mess with our exchange student or it's going to be a really bad year for you, Mick. Is that how you want to start off the year? Jennifer, what happened to you? you when we were dating, you were such a cool girl. And I, I get all kind of weirdo. Just leave him alone, Mick, and we won't have a problem. He kind of rolls his eye and kind of sits himself back up in the desk. And it's really not clear whether it's the fear of you, Jennifer, or just the embarrassment of literally the entire class laughing at him as you just flipped him like a uh, tiddlywink uh, on, I, onto his ass in the chair. And I nonchalantly go back to my seat. So class continues. Uh, finally, you get to the end of the preface of the bio, AP biology book. And the bell rings. And everybody starts breaking out from class. So I'd be curious, what is everybody's next class? So where does Dylan go next? Oh, geez. Uh, let's say history. So Dylan's on his way to history class, and Tim runs up to you. Now, Tim's a good, good buddy of, you, uh, of yours. Doesn't really go in your circle. You tend to hang out more with the jocks and the popular kids, and Tim's definitely not one of them. But he's always been a good friend of you. He runs up and he goes, Dylan, dude, did you read the latest issue of All Star? Oh, my gosh. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I picked it up. It's at the house. Dude, Can't wait. like, you're not going to believe what happens. So, like... Like, like all star, like he, 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 oh, I, oh, I, dude, you gotta read it, man, so we can talk about it tonight. Promise me you'll do it. We'll go on. Definitely. Well, first thing, okay, man. We'll, first okay, thing. Like, like, like the minute you're done, dude, like as soon as you finish. Absolutely, man. Like, first last thing. word, you're texting me, right? And say, call <laughs> me, right? Last word. Absolutely. All right, cool. I, like, I gotta go to class, man. It's good, good seeing you. Missed you this summer, good to buddy. See you, man. Yeah. He heads off. Where does Jennifer go to class next? Um, Jennifer, you know what? She has study hall for second period. It's not the best place, uh, <laughs> second period, but yeah, she, she is there trying to keep a low profile. So I'm imagining Jennifer, you kind of go into study hall and it's not real, you know, the seating's enough for, you know, 30 some odd kids. I think there's only about maybe 15 in there. And, uh, I'm also imagining, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you immediately just go to the back. Yeah, I, I kind of slink in, not notice. Uh, Jennifer looks very different than she did end of sophomore year. Uh, instead of being all bubbly and whatnot, she looks more, uh, she doesn't do unkempt, I should say. She doesn't put any any effort into her her makeup or her hair. So she almost seems like, looks, seems like a different person uh so that definitely she slinks through the back tries not to make eye contact with anyone now where study hall is you can actually see the back area of the school and understand that the school is surrounded in uptown by all of these you know huge skyscraper buildings but it's a high school so in the back they've got a football field they've got a soccer field they've got a, a basketball like gymnasium area and there's also a pond a lot of times students will sit around the pond and you know, study on the benches. There's a fountain in the middle of the pond with kind of a, like a stone uh, grappling goose mascot shaped uh, thing that's spitting water out of it. Jennifer, uh, as you're looking out at the window, kind of you know, spacing out a little bit, you're startled as a goose flies up and lands in the open window right where you're looking. And it just goes, ah, ah. Um, like, ah, and I try to, I push it. I'm going, get behind me, Goosefer. So let's do our first roll for the, for the game. <laughs> let's go ahead and do a prowess roll. Uh, what do you prowess. have in prowess? Uh, I have a seven in prowess. All right, so our target number is going to be, let's see, Goosefer. Like a normal goose, I think our target number would be something like four. But let's make this interesting. Let's make the target number six for this. So what you'll do is add seven to your roll, then roll a d6. Okay. Oh, 
Come on. Whoa. Ooh, a 12. Now we're going to add that to Gucifer's prowess, and he's going to roll. All right, so he rolled with his three prowess. He rolled only a four to your 12. That is considered a massive success. So not only will you be able to knock him over, Kimberly or uh, Jennifer, but you can do something extra. What is the extra you want to do with that massive success? Um, can you explain like what an ex example of an extra would be? So mechanically, you can do things like stun or slam, um, which may not apply here. So I also give wide latitude. So if you think there's something cool and extra you'd like to happen, throw can it I out and we'll see him, if it's worth the massive success. Can I send him flying backwards? a few feet like so, not just like push them off like like sit him flying a little bit so this is and this is second story which is amazing that this big evil goose flew up this far you push him and he, he flies back and he's a good 10 15 away before he kind of catches his wings and kind of clangs down and kind of gives you an evil look as he flies back to the pond and so. i make a very rude gesture at him that he doesn't understand because he's a goose <laughs> Oh, he right. understands. So period two, <laughs> where do we find Ashley? So Ashley uh, is supposed to be in math. Ashley did, however, get a text message from her friend Stephanie asking her to meet her in the bathroom. Uh, so there's this, these old bathrooms at the back of the school that nobody uses that all the populars will go, like smoke cigarettes in it. So she's just going to go hang out there instead. So it's only the syllabus. Nobody's going to miss her. It's one of those situations where, like, there's the new part of the school and, like, the older part of the school. You can tell where they added to Ultra City High. And we, we see Ashley kind of weave her way through all the new ones. And then she gets to a different section of the school where the lockers are shorter and things aren't kept quite as clean. The doors don't have any decorations or anything on it. And it's a left and a right and a left and a right. And the very far back, past all the janitor uh, doors, is this bathroom. And at, as Ashley's approaching, she can smell, she can smell the clove cigarette. It's my favorite. What can I say? We all have our vices. Uh, so yeah, she goes in and she heads into the bathroom uh, to go hang out with uh, Stephanie. And it's like Stephanie knew you were coming because she's already got, she's just finishing lighting the, sec, the second clove cigarette. She hands it to you. She takes a drag of hers because <coughs> she only does this to hang out with you and only do oh, yeah, no, you are. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And she, she absolutely, like, the second that Ashley takes a puff just erupts in coughing. She clearly only does this for the look. Uh, <laughs> if she ever makes the mistake of inhaling, she just ends up, like, looking real dumb, so... So I'm imagining a bit of a montage here, Ashley, where if we see the two of you after taking one drag in front of each other to kind of prove to each other, yes, I smoke too, we both smoke. But neither of you take another drag and just slowly the, the ash on each of these clove cigarettes <laughs> exactly. just gets longer just grows and longer. And, grows. And, yeah. and the only time it drops off is when you're doing hand gestures as you're, mm -hmm. as you're discussing things. So we montage the rest of the day at Ultra City High, first day of school. Now, the four of you had quite an exciting summer. I think to a large degree, you weren't necessarily friends before you knew each other. You kind of, some of you hanged out in similar circles, some of you in different circles. But what happened over the summer truly bonded the four of you. So I'm imagining the four of you go somewhere after school. So where do you think, um, a coffee shop? Um, where do you think you might hang out after school, the four of you? Todd needs to experience pizza. Yes. <laughs> so a pizza place, a local pizza place. Excellent, excellent. And uh, Ashley, what is the, what is the like? We got to take we got to take Todd. He's got to have pizza. He's never had pizza. So mm -hmm. what what is the name? What who has the best pizza in Ultra City? So if everybody knows that the best pizza in all of Ultra City is at Lazzaroni's, so. If we can make it over to Lazzaroni's and if we can get a table because it's always slam packed after school because of all of the high schoolers that come in. But, uh, you know, I could probably get us in. It'll be fine. So you guys take the bus because uh, it's on the other side of town and you get to Lazzaroni's and it, man, it looks like your timing was great. Just in time. It looks like most of the chairs and the seats are full, but the uh, the window, the front window, there's 
basically counter seating, right? Looking out over the, uh, the, the street, and there's four benches right there. Those are some benches. Do you guys have any suggestions? <laughs> do you, where do you guys want to sit? It seems like we're going to sit in these benches, yeah? All right, let's, yeah. I, Ashley goes over and takes a seat. So, right, so what what should we start, Todd, with? Food, please. Yes, but, but, but like, the toppings on the pizza. It's got to be pepperoni, right? Got to start with the pepperoni. Come on, I was thinking pineapple and ham. We've talked about this. Ugh. No pineapple on pizza. We are not. <laughs> we are not reopening this can of worms. You and I did not talk for half of sophomore year because of pineapple on pizza. Pineapple on pizza is perfectly fine. It's unnatural. <laughs> it's unfortunate. It is gross. It is. It is just gross. It's not great. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? Todd, they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you and I, I will have pineapple pizza one day. So, as as Ashley and Jennifer are arguing about t the pizza toppings, uh, Dylan, you without saying a whole lot, just stand up and go to the counter. So you're going to actually be the one who orders the pizza, and I'm dying to know what are the toppings on this large pizza. Oh, geez, I'm going to do half pepperoni and half ham with. Pineapple. Very, it seems very like it pained you to say that. <laughs> it did pain me a little to say it. <laughs> so you, you're there waiting. You get a little uh, one of those metal tent cards that has the little number on it that says 15. Uh, and when they call out 15, you know, you have to go up and uh, get your uh, pizza. There's a sound. And it, it's not a sound you're real familiar with. It's kind of a clanging bell sound. And it almost sounds, no, don't, no, yeah, yeah, that's an alarm. Like, there's an alarm. And you realize as you're looking through the window, right straight across the street is Alter City Federal, the main banking uh, franchise in Ultra City. And that's where the noise is coming from. And we start to see Ultra City's finest pull up as cars pull up and start blocking the streets. They're very loud. <laughs> yeah, that usually only happens when somebody did something stupid, um, like steal from a bank. Luckily, the police are here, right? So we don't have to handle it. Why would we handle it? So but we could handle it. <laughs> yeah, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the mechanics in the game. So every one of the four of uh, our heroes has a quality. They have three qualities. And these qualities are things about them, things that can help them or things that can make them do dumb things. So Mako's, one of Mako's qualities is the next all-star. An all-star is kind of the legendary superhero of Ultra City. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a determination point, Great. Dylan, and you're not going to sit here in just normal clothes and see and just watch as a spectator on what's happening over at Ultra City Federal. So what are you going to do? So I've just picked up the pizza, right? No, they haven't called the pizza yet. They haven't called the pizza yet at all. Okay, that's good. Uh, so is there a, like a back door that I can sneak out of the restaurant? Yep, right past the bathrooms. Where does one change costumes when one is... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the restroom, and then I'm going to change into my superhero suit, and then I'm going to sneak out the back door. <laughs> okay, so you <laughs> jump into the bathroom. Ashley, Jennifer, Todd... Inexplicably, we just see Dylan take off. Does Dylan say anything before he leaves? Oh, I guess I should, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just gone. Yeah. He just disappears. He leaves the number on the on the counter and makes a break for it. Uh, no, I think uh, I think he's going to say something to the effect of, uh, you know, we we uh, we you know we have to do it. We're 
uh, we're we're responsible now. We we have to be we have to go to help if we can. And then he's going to make his break for it, and he's going to leave the little tent right on the counter. Okay. So we see we see Dylan dodge into the men's bathroom. All three of you. Well, I know two of you know what he's doing, right? Because it's all that Dylan talked about on the flight home is how we're going to get costumes. We've got powers now. We have responsibilities. What? I'm not sure Todd has any idea what the hell is going on, um, but I'm curious to know if, what on tape. What <laughs> Ashley and Jennifer's reaction is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, both kind of go. We, we sigh and we look at each other and then we, I think, both take off and, and also hit the restroom well, to change. Or at least Ashley does. Um, Jennifer, I, I, I wanted to put the limit of performance on her her powers meaning that she has to to say something to transform and that transforms the way she looks from a normal girl to fog witch um but before she does that she's going to look at todd and go todd we need to go with them and apparently stop the bad guys okay do you have something to change into so that you don't look like that yes awesome then let's go and turn into our other selves i i I don't know this is new to me i don't it feels weird let's go okay so kirsten's already in the women's bathroom uh uh i'm sorry ashley is and then we see jennifer come in and as jennifer's coming in you've had a minute or two um, what are we? Do- what is she walking into, Ashley, as she enters the women's bathroom? <laughs> she is walking into Ashley struggling into a pair of tights and a corset, and it's just, <laughs> she's like, they make it so easy in Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> the comics make it look so much easier than it is. <laughs> I told you that tights and definitely a corset is not good for like movement. Yeah, but look at how good I look. <laughs> Have you seen this butt? This butt is amazing. <laughs> Ashley, we're sisters. We have the same butt. You've got a great butt, too. <sighs> I call upon the guardian of the Fen so that I may do her work. And water comes out of the sink. It's all brackish and gross looking and it flows over her and she becomes very swamp haggish looking. And her teeth turn a very bright, like algae green. That's amazing. And she looks at Violet and goes, How did you get the good outfit? Kissed ass. <laughs> I get cursed by the bog witch and get blessed by her. This isn't fair. So while she's still struggling, I'm gone, so I'm gone. <laughs> After so, a moment of this, Ashley is like, screw it. Uh, I appeal to the guardians of the glade to transform myself and reveal my inner light. And two wings sprout from her back and unfurl into these giant butterfly wings, which she then tries very clumsily to get through the door of the bathroom. So minutes before that, while the back and forth and the changing is happening in the women's bathroom, I'm imagining that Jennifer led Todd to the men's bathroom, and I'm imagining Jennifer kind of pushed him into the men's bathroom as she went into the women's bathroom. Yelling, so cut- make sure he's okay, <laughs> or make sure he's okay. I want to cut to Todd kind of like stumbling into the men's bathroom what what is dylan doing as Todd uh, enters? so i mean honestly by this point i feel like he's practiced this a few times so <laughs> so he's he's ready to go and he was about to pop out the door <laughs> as they pushed him in so you kind of run into each other <laughs> oh sorry todd you gotta get changed man let's go okay Just do that thing where we both try to get past each other and end up going the same direction like three or four times. Oh, the awkward dance. So Dylan now in full Mako 
steps outside into back into the back of the restaurant and there is shrinking violet and jenny green teeth but we cut back into the men's bathroom with a slightly confused todd with very clear instructions given to him okay right change <laughs> i'll do something like those books dylan kept showing me yes good he'll uh he'll kneel down on the floor of the bathroom the very definitely clean floor of this <laughs> restaurant um and just start rubbing the tile and be like come on come on and after a few seconds the tile just kind of explodes upwards and a very large black wooden ore pops up out of the ground <laughs> he'll grab it's like okay good and he'll just wrap it on the floor a couple times and more tiles explode as like dirt and mud and rocks and all this other stuff just form up around him kind of like a cocoon and after a few seconds it just dissolves or sleeps into him about half and half and standing there is a much larger man with uh, what kind of looks like a mashup between your classic tights superhero and uh, a Grim Reaper. So I hope this is good. <laughs> <laughs> so while that's happening, I sh I'm sure we hear commotion and I'm like, what's he doing in there? <laughs> So in stop in to each of the bathrooms, Ashley, Jennifer, Dylan, and Todd entered. And exiting now, we have in the tight hallway, shrinking Violet with her huge butterfly wings. We've got Jenny Green Teeth. We've got Mako in his ultra traditional sleek superhero outfit. We're and out, and out <laughs> steps the ferryman. What are the four of you gonna do? Does this work? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 it works. It works. Come on, Tales from the Crypt. <laughs> so no, we're going I'm out the, the back door, right? Yeah, What's the, definitely the back door. <laughs> Come on, Especially Todd. with you dressed like you are, Dylan. <laughs> are those things? <laughs> so the four of you head right out through the back door where the dumpsters and trash bags are in the back. And just very briefly, for just one panel, we cut back into the inside of the restaurant. We see a guy in his apron come out from behind the pizza ovens and walk down the hallway, walk into the men's bathroom, and broken tiles are everywhere. There's holes of dirt under there. And he's like, dude. We cut back to the back of the restaurant. Not again. <laughs> Pizza's From the back of the yet, restaurant, so you can good. hear on the other side of the building, right to the front of the building, you can hear the um, a uh, megaphone. Don't hurt anybody. We're going to send somebody in to negotiate. Don't do anything to the hostages. Sounds like a hostage situation. It does. Uh, so... They're obviously going to be in, like, the front of the building. Can we work our way around to, like, the side of the building? Sure. Hmm. Okay, like, here's here's my thought. I'm going to go in because I'm, like, real tiny and stuff, and people can't see me, and I look like a butterfly. So, like, how about I go get a little bit of case of the joint, and then I come back? Does that sound good? Yes. That sounds good. Okay. Just remember to actually shrink this time. She, like, gives her sister the evil eye and then immediately <laughs> begins to shrink and shrink and shrink until she's about three inches tall. So we've got little tiny shrunk, shrink and vi shrinking violet. And you also have the superpower of speed, and you have a power level of two, which gives you the speed of a fast horse. 
-hmm. So you, there is an alleyway that um, allows you to get from the back of, of the pizza joint up to the front street. Okay. Um, could one of you give me a lift up there so I don't have to hoof it the entire way? <laughs> Maybe next time I'll shrink at the end of the alley. <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. I'll I'll, I'll pick her up and I'll carry her. Okay, then you're gonna work your way down to the end of the uh, of the alley. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, ferryman and uh, uh, Jenny are behind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go forward. She can fly. So you yeah, just give me a good toss, and I'll be just you know, <laughs> like a paper plane. It'll be all right. What are we going to do, Mako? Uh, am I really going to toss you at this building? Oh, I'm yeah. really going to toss her at this building, apparently. She's like, assumes the, the flying like position. <laughs> we probably should have had someone stronger do this. <laughs> so actually, Something I'm going to make this coordination strange. check. Uh, That's uh, better. Coordination check, and let's set, set it to a difficulty five. So I'm going to roll five. I'm going to have five plus a die versus your... Your coordination is what? Uh, my coordination is six. All right, so let's add six to your die. Good you roll, solid roll. Seven. To my seven. So on a tie, you are successful. You're barely successful, though. <laughs> so this, it's it's going to happen. We're going to get shrinking violet to the front of the building. But it's not going to go exactly the way we wanted to get Shrinking Violet to the front of the building. So I'm going to let uh, Shrinking Violet tell me what happened. So Mako leans back and just... Whoo! So uh, the way that Mako... The way that Mako throws her, uh, kind of hurling her like a shot put, is not the way that she asked him to throw her. <laughs> so she instead goes tumbling ass over tea kettle through the air... Uh, until she manages to get to the point where she can stabilize herself about right near the front entrance. And, okay. You so throw like a start... <laughs> I'm imagining Mako, uh, it's like, all right, the last time I threw it, it was baseball. Right, I'll just throw her like a baseball. So he kind of splits his fingers around each of your shoulders and throws you and puts a spin on it, right? And you're like, what the <laughs> Exactly. It. It's exactly that. Like, you ever seen one like of those whirly copter, uh, <laughs> like the seeds? It looks very, very similar, actually. That's phenomenal. So you guys, uh, the three of you, lose sight of, of, of Shrinking Violet. But Shrinking Violet, you do land right on a, a sill of the front of the bank itself. And the bank is one of those traditional comic book banks, right? It's got the pillars, the steps leading up to it. Everything's kind of stone and marble. It's got really long windows with uh, sills on it. The windows are, are caged on the inside. And you look inside, uh, Violet, and you can see there are several men in ski masks. Some have pistols. Some seem to have some sort of rifle or machine gun. And it looks like that they're corralling people uh, together in the bank and getting them to sit in groups uh, on the floor. All right. I want to see what it would take for me to sneak in uh, without being detected. Um, Let's do a coordination versus awareness. Okay. So my coordination is six. All right. So then, I'll add uh, that to my roll. All right. So you got a 10. This is going to be an awareness of three on these uh, on this group, mm -hmm. plus my D six puts me at an eight. So that's at a my, that's going to be at a positive two. So that puts you at a mod a uh, moderate success. So you are you are able to sneak in. How do you sneak in? Uh, well, you know those like little traffic cone thingies. Like basically, I take a traffic cone. Toy Story style, over the head, <laughs> very slowly move it into the building okay. <laughs> until I get to a point where I can ditch it. So inside, these guys um, on the ski mask are all, get down, go sit over there, I'm going to, you know, again, you learn, and yelling and stuff like this. And they see, I'm imagining kind of a, a rotating door at the front of the bank. 
Mm-hmm. And one of the guys are like, none of you say anything. And then they see the door rotating and he looks, he's like, but he doesn't see anybody in the rotating door. It doesn't even think twice about the fact that suddenly there's a traffic cone in the lobby on the other side. <laughs> so Mako Ferryman and Jenny, you see the little cone kind of scoot around and go through the front revolving door. Luckily, none of the police saw this, but I think the three of you know exactly what's happening. Should it be closer if bad things happen? <laughs> You know, I'm debating whether we just change tack altogether and actually go talk to the police. We're we're superheroes. We can do that, right? We're on the side of good. Okay. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm sliding over and I'm going to... Wait, gonna, wait, wait. Gonna... Did you just send Viol- or Violet in to a situation where there are potentially multiple armed people. She is three inches tall. And now you want to talk to the cops? I'm new at this. Would you rather we waited? (laughs) You know what? You declared yourself team leader. Go. (laughs) Just, 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 Just do it. After you, fearless leader. The irony of saying that about a three inch tall person. (laughs) Oh, that was purposeful. (laughs) Furman's just going to walk over to the side of the building because no one told him no. Okay. (laughs) So you start walking ferryman uh through that kind of weaving yourself through the police cars and you know like Excuse one me. of the one of the cops is you know just kind of puts an arm out to try to slow you down and he, you just spin him like a top immediately and he falls falls to the side and you work Sorry. your way over to the other you're in the alleyway on the side um mako and green teeth you can see this happening you just see ferryman just starts walking across Jeez. the street to the bank now what? <laughs> I feel like we should have had more of a plan. Go, Mako. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to skim up to the cop that looks like he's in charge. Okay. And I'm going to say uh, something to the effect of, uh, excuse me, officer. I'm here to help. And, and give him my best uh, you know, superhero pose. So... He turns and you can see on his badge, Lieutenant Simpson turns and he goes, oh, my God, not another one of you guys. Oh, get, look, all you're going to do is cause trouble. You know what? Do me a favor. Go call All Star. All Star will straighten this out. But you I've never even seen you before. Get out of here. You don't belong here. God, this, does that. <laughs> <laughs> this didn't work as well as I know. <laughs> Uh, all right, new plan. Uh, I'm headed over to meet up with Ferryman. All right, so you head over to Ferryman. What's uh, Jenny Greenteeth doing? Um, I'm going with him. All right, so all three of you eventually end up in in the alleyway. There's no access on the side of the alleyway, no, no windows or anything. Uh, let's cut back inside. Shrinking Violet, you kind of lift up the cone and really for the first time, get a true kind of sense of what's happening, right? A a full look at everything. And you see there might be maybe a total of five or six gentlemen in, uh, um, actually it's men and women in, in ski masks. Like I said, some have pistols, some have, it looks like, uh, like an AK 47 type knockoffs, like assault rifles. Um, it's kind of stuff. If you take it to subway for no reason. Um, what's really crazy though is on the other side of the counter and they've already taken all of the um people that are, the tellers that are working behind the counter you can see the huge metal vault cartoon style door right a, a vault door that doesn't exist in any bank in the world but in comic books it's huge it's got a big wheel on it and there 
you can see some guy just and he doesn't look quite normal. So let me quickly show it to you. Now, you've read about him before. I don't think you've ever seen him before. He's kind of a low-level thug. He calls himself Blood Diamond. And oh. you can see very easily why he's got that name. He's got this shiny glass-like skin with kind of a red tint to it. And each of those punches is doing a lot more damage to that uh, to that vault door than if anybody, you know, any normal person was punching it. Okay. Uh, how many people does he look like he has with him? Uh, so we've got one super, it looks like. Uh, do we have any, you know, other superheroes that I could see? Or super villains, role. rather? Yeah, sure. what's your awareness? My awareness... is a four so i will roll that yep add and... four to the roll yep. all Woo! right so you rolled a seven all right so a negative three is considered let me see what that's considered here it's considered a major failure so as cool. Best so as he's you, the only guy. <laughs> as best as you can tell, it looks like we just have Blood Diamond punching in the vault, and now you're able to get an accurate count. There are five gentlemen in ski masks with guns. Okay. All right. Um. So, are there anybody? Like, how many hostages does it look like we have? Is it like a fully crowded lobby? Yeah. Or is it's it only like there's like, like fifteen or one twenty. One teller and and some old lady on her date. Yeah, um, yeah, there's like okay, 15, so 15 or 20, and it looks like what they're doing is kind of bunching them up into like groups of five and having them sit back to back with each other in, in groups on the floor. Okay, um, I would like to try and kind of sneak slash hover fly up to one of the groups of five, uh, kind of look at the one who, who looks like they are the least jumpy, uh, and kind of land on their shoulder and be like, I'm going to get you out. Okay. And start uh, trying to. Are they tied together, or are they just kind of in a circle? <clears throat> they aren't yet, but you can see that they're pulling, starting to pull ropes out of their bag. So it looks like that's the plan. I'm not going to have you roll for that, um, uh, Ashley. You are uh, uh, streaking violet at that size with the chaos of what these uh, people are trying to do. You have no trouble sneaking up. You hop up onto the shoulder of. Um, Let's have this be a guy in a very, very uh, buttoned up tight suit. And you can see manager on his little little name bags there. Um, he's got a bunch of gel in his hair, kind of go back. And it looks like he's, uh, you know, starting to get a widow's peak, losing a little bit of hair. But if you were to point it out to him, you could tell he would not react well to that. Let's cut back out to the hallway. We have got uh, the ferryman, Mako and Jenny Greenteeth in the alleyway. As far as the front of the bank, is it like one big story? Are there is there a second story? There is not. Okay. Uh, and there's no windows on the side of the building. Correct. Any thoughts on how we'd get in? Uh, we could probably go back around back where the armored trucks drop off and take cash. I could make an entrance. <laughs> that too. That too. I like the back door. <laughs> Let's try that. <laughs> Maybe we can make an entrance back there. Okay. All right. So the three of you cut through down the, down the alleyway, get to the other side. There's cars back there, a bunch of like Honda Civics and things like that. You can tell it's probably employee parking back in the back there. Fenced off. The back of the building is windowless. There is a large door, but unlike the front door, which has got kind of the revolving door and then two, you know, regular push doors, the back door is this huge steel door uh, that doesn't even have a handle on it. Pop 
Todd, can you open that? I will try. So what are we going to do, Ferryman? Uh, should I do it quietly or loudly? You know what? Your choice. Explore. Okay. <clears throat> he's, he's actually just going to then look at uh, Mako and... Quite Last weird. time she let me make a decision, I got in trouble. Let's see if we can do it quiet. First. Okay. Uh, yes, we will use Earth Control. Okay. With, uh, the Metal Control extra uh, to attempt your, to unlock the What's door. your power level? Seven. All right, so it's going to be seven plus a D6. Okay. Give us your useful powers. <laughs> The door is a strength five. Ooh, 13 to my 11. That is going to be a positive two, which gives you a moderate success. So how do you rip this door open? He runs his hands along the door, knowing that there's like a lock, locking mechanism. He's not entirely familiar with modern locking mechanisms, but he knows there's something in there. Once he figures it out, he fiddles with a bit, fiddles it with a, a little more, and then out of like slight frustration, he just kind of bonks on the door a bit, and it just happens to do the one little thing he needed for all of the pins to go in place and the door unlock. Yay. So, <laughs> you got... Je Jenny and, and Mako are in the back kind of watching, and, and I mean, Ferryman's huge, right? And he's kind of blocking the whole thing. And you just see his hands moving and going from behind, and you just see him go, boom, and all of a sudden you hear, ting, 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 as all these like little metal <laughs> pieces just fall onto the ground right at his feet, did he, and the did door he just, just goes. Did the door? I don't know what that is. <laughs> of course you don't. Back door is open. Just push it to the side. It, it pushes to the side, right? <laughs> oh, it fell. It, it, it like fell to the ground. Oh, so it's at your no, no. feet. He was, he was just unlocking it. Whoops. It's fine. It's still I did kind feet. of both. <laughs> well, nice work. He defeated the door. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going in. After right, you, so... fearless leader. Oh my! You gosh. head in from the back. What's the marching order? <clears throat> we can only go one wide in this hallway. Fine, I'm going first. <laughs> So I've got I'll Mako, go Mako, Green Teeth, and the Ferryman. Most assuredly not bulletproof. <laughs> so as you're coming through, you can hear the yelling that's happening. You can hear these thugs happening. And Mako, you see it first. The rest of the two are not far behind. You're kind of off to the side, not seen immediately. You come out and you can see you've got these five, five gentlemen. Uh, looks like maybe three gentlemen, two ladies in these ski masks. Like I said, they're all armed. Some have pistols. Uh, some have guns. You see Blood Diamond punching the vault i need a coordination test from each of you oh no <laughs> this will be for initiative oh, no. okay so that's for all four of us then yep awesome okay, so we've got a 10 from mako Ten from Gr Jenny. An eight from Ferryman. All right, and a ten from Shrinking Violet. So those tens will allow you to go first. So the way it, initiative and combat works is you have to be high enough. One of you has to be high enough in the coordination, and then we alternate. So one of the four of you can go first, then one of the NPCs will go, and we'll just keep going back and forth. One thing you can spend your determination on is you can do back to back. So, for example, if Shrinking Violet goes, Mako could spend a determination to go right after Shrinking Violet instead of the alternating back and forth. So, who wants to go first? Does anybody have a plan on dealing with these? I have guns? an idea. I have an idea. So, if you want to let me go first, I will. She has an idea. 
<laughs> I didn't say it was a good idea. I said it's an idea. Let's go. All right. So, um, so does, does Violet see the rest of the, the party show up? Yeah. Okay. So Violet gets in the guy's ear and is like, uh, all right, I'm going to go fight that giant blood monster jerk. Uh, you need to be the one to get ready to rally these people and get them to move, okay? P -p 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 Please don't get us killed. Just get them out of here and it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We've done this a thousand times. Don't even worry about it. I'm not a hero. That's okay. You don't have to be. You just have to be the person who can help today. He kind of nods. Uh, at which point, uh, Violet takes off into the air uh, and goes and is hovering up above Blood Diamond at a, uh, a height that, when descended from, will be very painful. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so she is going to uh, manifest using her powers of plantimation um, a very large thorn, and she is going to attack Blood Diamond from it. And I am actually going to invoke one of my aspects for that, which is Death on Tiny Wings. Okay, so another another uh, neat uh, mechanic here is that you've got powers, but you've also got specialties. And at the end of the day, each hero will end up with the same. And specialties are kind of like things that somebody could have um you know as a normal person right uh whereas powers you know are something extra here so that's going to give you a plus two to this roll so we're going to manifest this thorn and mm -hmm. then i'm going to do it I, let me have a prowess uh, uh, attack so what is your prowess gotcha. prowess is a five all right so you're going to make that a seven and then roll your d6 perfect Very nice. A 12. Blood diamonds. Rolls an 8. So that is going to be a plus 4. That is going to give you a major success. So not only will this succeed, but you have the opportunity. You can either stun or slam him. So let's first figure out the damage. Uh, so you're going to be a plus 1 because of the thorn. What is your strength? Uh, strength, uh, I believe, is a five as well. Yes, it's a five. So this will do six damage. You'll do the full damage because of the level of success that you have. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear what happens right before you actually end up hitting Blood Diamond. So you're kind of up in the air, jumped up into the air. You generate this thorn. Then what happens? She she kind of yells down in her full voice, Hey, Roid Rage! Time for me to be a thorn in your side. Nice. <laughs> and as she drops, she has the uh, the thorn, uh, which um, she gets to a bigger height, so she actually can stab it in with a little bit more force. And so she just comes down and just jams it into his back and so like slams him to the ground in the process. He hears that, and you see his head turn up, and you've got, of course, the exclamation points and kind of the action lines that come off of his eyes, like, darn. And you're coming down. Now, are you going full size or are you staying shrunk? Uh, she is actually going to go full size nice. and turn so back into... As you're into... coming down, you're going from mm -hmm. three inches to your full five foot whatever size. Mm -hmm. And full force without missing at all, the th you take the thorn right into his back. And as soon as it touches his body, the thorn immediately breaks. Your hand hits the surface of his, of his skin and it's just, it, you fall backwards on your back. And, and your hand, your hand Ow. immediately hurts. All right. How? <laughs> so Blood Diamond's going to go next. Blood Diamond's going to turn around. He goes, you were part of the plan. And he's going to try to punch you. So it's going to be his prowess uh, versus your. Now you have a choice here. You can go with coordination to dodge. Mm -hmm. Or you could go with your prowess. And if you succeed enough, you would hit him back. Ooh. Oh. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with coordination. I think I think this is going to be a dodge out of the way kind of situation. All right. So do your coordination plus a d6. All right. Ooh. 
That's a nine versus Blood Diamond's nine because he is the one uh, attacking. He is actually going to succeed, but it's not going to be a full success. It's only a marginal success. And with a bashing attack, he's going to deal half the attack's damage rounded down to you. So that is going to be to your stamina. I'd like for you to go ahead and take uh, four off your stamina. Oh. So what is your stamina right now? Uh, I'm, let's see. I think it was like a... S That's a really good question. I didn't write it, it down. I'm it's, doing great, guys. <laughs> it's strength and uh, willpower, willpower combined. Okay, that's fine. That's 10 then. All right. So, so my be, stamina is now at a three, correct? Uh, down to a six. So he does. He oh. takes off four. So gotcha. Ten okay. Minus down to, four. to a six. So he, you fall. You break the. You break the thorn on his back, and you hurt your hand on it. And you're kind of sitting there, leaning up against the the back of the uh, the kind of inside of the bank tellers thing. He turns and says, "You're not part of the plan," and just punches you right in the right into the, like the chest area, the upper chest, right below your neck, and you go blasting through. Uh, the counter and just come shooting out the other side. So the three, the other three, everybody just sees full size shrinking violet just sliding like a hockey puck across the bank into the uh, into the fr uh, kind of into the front entrance, crashing into one of the doors. That wasn't that, part of the plan. <laughs> that was Blood Diamond. We now can have a hero go. Who's going next? Anybody? You want to take it, Mako? I have, I'm last I? in line, so yeah. I have I'll to go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. You got a plan? I, I have some. You I'm have a teenager. An no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we did we see her dive into Blood Diamond? Yes. Yep. Okay. So you saw that whole exchange. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is can I screw it um I would like to use uh oh, like run in and I I just want to straight up try to punch him yeah so you start running towards him you lean back you punch so this is going to be a straight prowess roll all righty So it'll be, do the pluses for your prowess and then do a mm -hmm. D6. Very nice. So plus six, which is a massive success. So you will do, what is your strength? Uh, my strength is a five. Okay. Oh, no, six. Do, I'm sorry. My strength is a six. You'll do the full six damage. Plus you'll get a bonus. What would you like that bonus extra to be? Um, can I send him flying into the bank vault door? You sure can. So what we'll, we'll, we'll do is we'll do that as a slam. How does that sound? Okay. Yeah, that okay, works. Okay, great. So you punch, slam him into the back. You're, you're, you feel and realize it's possible that this may have hurt you more than a hurt blood diamond. So you punch oh, him. no doubt. <laughs> and he, but he does react to the fact he comes flying back crushes into the bank door and it's enough to finally finish the job he started. And we see the vault door oh, no. kind of fall back. <laughs> and what we're doing is we're going to take him out around uh, for that slam. So he's slammed and kind of caught in all of the wheel and the mechanisms uh, of that. So let's hey, go ahead and Craig, have one I'm going to our... spend a determination. Okay. And I'm going to jump the line. Yep. Uh, and I don't know exactly how this works, let's figure uh, it out. but I have water control uh, at seven. And what I'd like to do is sort of wash a wave of, of water at the, uh, at the gunman and maybe catch as many of them as I can and sort of try to knock them aside. Um, where's the water coming from? Uh, so water control says that I can create and control water. So I assume wow. I'm going to create and then control that water. <laughs> All right. So this will be against their prowess against your water control <laughs> so what is your water control you said it was seven uh, my water control is a seven all right and actually we're going to do it against their coordination they're just going to try to stay out of the way okie dokie all right your nine versus their six 
So that's going to be, a, I think, a major success, right? Yeah, major success. So I need to, I, so this is the first time we've seen Mako do this. Yes, indeed. So we've got Mako all suited up in his brand new costume. All, all ready to go. And so he sees he sees all these gunmen and, and decides that, you know, Jenny, Jenny's got Blood Diamond for right now. Uh, but he, he definitely doesn't like the look of all those guns. <laughs> and so he focuses a moment uh, to pull this water from, from the air and, and from around and just swooshes this giant wave of, of water across these, these gunmen to try to push them to the side. Now, what's cool about this is as you're kind of forming that ball of water and you kind of do the gesture and we just see it kind of spray out like Gambit style, just spray out and hit all of them. Because of the level of success, you're able to do it without hitting any of the um, of the uh, hostages. So the water comes and it knocks them back and you see some of the guns go flying and we see each of the six hens uh, five henchmen all fall to their back um, as they lay down there. Some kept their guns, uh, some did not. So the next next turn is going to be a henchman trying to get up. Uh, one of them gets up, so that means that we've got either uh, Jenny or uh, our ferryman can go. Jenny okay. already went. I thought I already went. Oh, that's right, you did. You punched, so it's just ferryman is all that's left yeah. then, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the poor tiles. <laughs> <laughs> so guns are bad, right? Guns so what he's are gonna bad. What he's going to attempt to do is to collect all of the the dropped guns. More more metal control. Excellent. I'm going to only set that to a difficulty three because a lot of them are loose right now. Okay. And then we'll do this against your metal your uh, earth control, which is where you get the metal extra, right? Mm hmm. A nine versus an eight. That is a success. So how does this happen? You're gonna you're gonna end up with all of the guns, but I need to understand how that happens. He's going to step forward out of out of the hallway, looking like Death Incarnate. Uh, give a slight wave to the to the hostages. It's okay. I'm a good guy. He's gonna reach his awful bony hand out. <laughs> And just squeeze his hand, and the guns go flying across the floor towards his hand. Excellent. And he's Excellent. just going to grab it with the other top of his hand, and, and if he can't do it now, he'll do it next turn where he's just going to crush all of them. Beautiful. So let's stop it right at the point where you have the ball yes. and you crush it. Okay. So I've got a spot for four more henchmen. The four henchmen that have not gone yet are immediately all standing up, and it looks like they don't want to stay here. So let's go back up to the top of the order. We've got a uh, hero's turn. Who, uh, any of the four of you can go. And and Blood Diamond will not be acting this turn because of the uh, slam from uh, uh, Green Teeth. What do we have in terms of foliage that exists in the bank? Do we have somebody's like ficus sitting on their desk or like a nice creeping plant? Of course, I think every single one of the, the desks there is going to have some little plant. And let's have some like almost like topiary shrubbery kind of in the corners, um, uh, kind of, you know, uh, just, you know, uh, shapes like like tubes and 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 circles like very, very pretty. So, yeah, there's no shortage of plants and pots. Excellent. Uh, well, in that case, what I'm going to do is I am going to use my plant control ability and I am going to uh grow some vines and have them wrap up blood diamond uh to try and keep him contained uh not that it is going to last for very long but it is enough to slow him down so he does not punch me again excellent so we're going to try that it'll be against his coordination and your plant control perfect so i have plant control five Your six versus his nine. So a negative three, that is going to be a major failure. 
So I, I'm imagining the plants come out, right? So you're able to, to control the plants, the plants and the vines kind of stretch out and he's got, he's on his back and he sees these plants coming to him and he's able to break one of his arms free. And as he does it, he just grabs the whole lot of them and just yanks them before they even reach him, pulling them to him with the, the pots of plant, the pots come flying and everything. And he just tosses them to the side. He can't act this turn. I'm going to have one henchman try to escape. So he's going to now get to the door. He's trying to go out, go out the front door. Who wants to go next? I will. Um, I would like to use vermin control to call rats <laughs> to, to, to attack and like cover blood diamond. So I think it's going to take a turn to summon the rats. Mm -hmm. So let's do that first, and then next act you'll be able to control them. Okay. So uh, what is your what is the, your vermin control? That's a, based off of your awareness, right? Um, let me double check. Uh, I have the power up. Um, look at me. Let's see. It says. It actually doesn't tell me. It, it just says, uh, uh, so I think, I think this is, you, you added this as an extra to your environmental control. So this will be a four. Four. So, it'll, okay. yep. So, and it'll be against a difficulty three. So go ahead and, uh, four plus your die roll. All righty. Very nice. So you have no, you, you no trouble doing that. So you just get done punching Blood Diamond, slamming him into that door. The door falls down. You see Shrinking Violet having the vines come. You see him grab those vines and they're yanking them past. How does Jenny Green Teeth summon these vermin? Um, I let out a terrifying inhuman whale that causes the rats to come towards me. And where do they come from? Uh, I would say everywhere. It's a city. So like out of the garbage cans, from the alleys, like there's already a back door open. There's just... How many are you imagining? Oh, as many as you'll let me. Like, I, I want. <laughs> I, I want to. Like, I have environmental control at four. So yeah, uh, or environmental awareness. So like, I'd be fine with a small wave of rats. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe like twenty, <laughs> twenty-five. That sounds great. All right. So we we see we see Jenny just let out this shriek into the air, and like places that were still are now moving, and we just see rats popping out from behind desks. Uh, within drawers flooding in from the back door and they're all coming to their piper all coming to jenny all right so henchman again try gets to the door so our, we got two henchmen at the door about to open the door to get out mako and ferryman i don't think i want to let them go although the cops are there are they still ski masks do they look like they're very uh, ski masks they are still wearing ski masks yep that's how you know they're bad guys. This is true. Uh, torn, torn. Uh, you know what? No, I'm I'm headed towards towards those two, uh, towards the door, and I'm gonna say, "Stop, villains!" And I'm gonna take a swing at the first one. Okay. All right. So uh, we ha we'll have you move over there, and then let's take a swing. That's gonna be your prowess against his his coordination. And my prowess is a gigantic four. Okay. So it'll be four plus a D6. Awesome. It'll be your five against my <laughs> six. That is going to be a failure. So what does the swing and the miss look like? <laughs> I think just in my in my rush to get over there, I just <clears throat> I just sort of miss passed and 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 just he obviously just moves himself right out of the way. Was Dylan much of a fighter before this summer? Uh, definitely not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to have another one. 
now to the door. So we've got three out of the five are at the door. Two are still on the, uh, or two have stood up and are heading towards the door. Ferryman. Crushing some guns. Okay. That's an incidental. I have no trouble with you just crushing and just okay. into this metal ball. He's going to walk over to the first pile of uh, people and immediately just like rip the ropes that are holding them. I'm sure he can do that with it. Oh, yeah. No strength problem. Level. Yep. He's going to look up at the situation going out the door and look at the wall next to him and look at the situation at the door and look at the wall next to him. He's going to make a new entrance. Okay. Just so, just gently punch a hole in it, a person-sized hole. Okay, great. So that's going to be the that'll be a 5, difficulty okay. 5. Against your uh it'll be against your strength. Yes. All right, that'll be your 13 versus my 8, a massive success. So walk me through what happens. He's going to size up the the wall do his magical earthy bits to just sort of kind of understand the cop the composition of the wall maybe move around a few beams or whatever and then just one really hard punch that is very loud um that's just like perfectly human shaped like it's almost an exact <laughs> door in the side of the wall and he's like leave it is dangerous here all right so you're doing and, like into the alleyway yes so you you punch the perfectly sized, almost like squared off like a mason. Just the door goes, the uh, stone goes slamming into the other side of the alley, breaks through. The people are like all free and they're like, oh, and they start, they start leaving out. He'll start counting them as well. As we hear that, that crash, right? We hear just that masonry hit the other side of the brick of the alleyway. We hear a second crash. But this one's from above. And all of you look up. Everybody looks up. Even Blood Diamond, who's on his back. And we see just an eruption come from the roof as it breaks open. And in flies one of the most famous heroes of Ultra City. And that is Diamond. Let me show everybody what Diamond looks like. Thank goodness it's a good guy. <laughs> So she flies in. She kind of hovers down, looks over, and looks around, and she says, hmm, looks like Blood Diamond is up to his old tricks again. And she starts heading towards him, uh, towards Blood Diamond. This is a perfect it's okay. time. We, we softened him up for you. <laughs> Perfect time for us to take a quick break. So we're going to take a 10 minute uh, bio break and we'll be right back. So diamond swoops in, breaks through the roof, flies in at speed and she stops, stands in the middle of the air and she goes, blood diamond, I'm bringing you to justice. And it seems to happen just so fast. And like a blink, she speeds, flies through the air faster than even uh, what uh, Shrinking Violet can move. You see her scoop up each of the five uh, bandits before they're able to leave out the door. She flies back to the rail where the front uh, gate, uh, the counter is for the tellers, grabs the, the foot rail, wraps all five of them up and, and ties, ties them up, and she takes them and throws them through the vault. She comes down, she picks up Blood Diamond. All of this is just happening like that. Picks up Blood Diamond, flies up into the air, and just punches him. And he goes flying into the ground. He lands in the ground. He's like, what the hell, Diamond? You're not supposed to hit that hard. She comes back, flies back down, picks him up, flies him up through the roof. And she comes back down. She goes, that takes care of that for today in no way acknowledging that any of the four of you are in the room. <laughs> she lands on the floor and starts to walk out the front door. Hey, who are you talking to? She kind of turns and looks at you and says, Pff. and then she walks, walks out into the front. 
by the time you, by you see her walking to the front of the um, the bank through the windows area, and you can see the flash bulbs going. Good job fighting the patriarchy with that outfit. So you see her kind of putting her hands up. You see reporters coming up and and you know recording with their phones. I don't know why they're writing on little pads. They don't do that anymore. You know they've got their phones <laughs> in her face and she's taking interviews. Are they related? <laughs> Both I diamonds? don't know. I would be Lego. Uh, yeah. Is there an awareness oh, test that we do can I know that? like a knowledge thing? <laughs> so so you there you have never heard of any connection or relation or kinship between between uh, Blood Diamond and and Diamond. But I do who's got the highest awareness, which is everybody's awareness. Not me. <laughs> also, not me. Uh, I have a three. I have five. <laughs> Ooh, very nice. Is that the highest that's, one? That's gonna. Yep, that's gonna be Kimberly. Okay, Kimberly, when you have a chance. Yep. When I'm done time. dying. Yep. We're gonna do it against the difficulty three. All right. What was that? So it's going to be uh, it's going to be an awareness roll. So it'll be your five plus a d six against right. my difficulty three. Roll. Very nice. So a three is going to be what a major success? Is that what plus three is? Major success. So I'm going to give you two bits of information. So Jenny, you're standing there, and you look and you can see that diamond not only through the group of henchmen wrapped up in this metal encasement that she made, but it broke through the back of the bank door. So you can actually now see into the back of the, of the building. All right. And you, you can see the five of them still wrapped up and they're just bloodied uh, from that, you know, being thrown through a bank vault, right? You look around though, and all of the safety deposit boxes have been slid open and all of the like like the different uh, vault areas have all been opened and as best as you can tell there's nothing left in the vault the other thing that you notice and you notice this as you were coming in and it's just now registering it as kind of your your hackles are coming up and like this is weird is you remember seeing a scar on the back of one of the henchmen's neck that didn't wasn't a big deal. It was the fact that you saw two of them had scars on the back of their neck. Hmm. Something seemed not right. Like those guys had like does the scar look like a scar or does it look like it could potentially be a brand? Uh, they're they're in the back of the uh they're in the back of the uh, bank if you want to go check them out. Sure. Hey, let's go look at at, at these guys to figure out what's going on because uh, that bank vault just got cleared out. One minute. How did he? I don't think but... it's he who did it. So you think this was just a distraction around the? I front think we have a we have a professional wrestling type setup. Todd's gonna make sure that all of the hostages have been freed out the door he made specifically <laughs> and then he's going to attempt to try to close up the hole before someone yells at him oh. yep so you have no trouble doing that at all fairman so they everybody wheels out and closes it up and as 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 jenny makes this statement and start you see her starting to head deeper into the vault you look at the hole in the back of the vault and you may not be the sharpest knife in the drawer but if there's anything that the ferryman knows, it's earth and metal. And what was thrown through the back of that could not, the five people wrapped in a, like, you know, a metal railing could not have made that hole. Ah, yes. Okay. Are the vaults supposed to have the back wall destroyed like this? No. That would go against the purpose of a vault. Okay. I think this was here before we arrived. 
robbing an empty bank? I'm like, well, I mean, that would make Blood Diamond and his people fall, guys. So I'm going to go and still look at the guys. Are they conscious? So three of, them, three of them are unconscious. There's actually two of them conscious, a woman and a man, and they're, and they're there, and they've got their, still have their ski masks on, and, and they're covered up. And the ski masks don't cover completely on the neck. And if you're looking at that, you see they both, and these are two other ones, not the ones you saw originally. Mm-hmm. You're seeing what looks like, uh, like, a, like a healed up scar that's maybe about an inch and a half, and it's completely perpendicular with like the vertebrae on each one of them. But as you're walking up, you hear uh, the woman say to the man, she goes, this was not that we, th- she wasn't supposed to hurt us. I know this is bullshit. I walk up and I go, so how scripted was that? Huh? You said she wasn't supposed to hurt you. She was supposed uh, to no, she, I, I said she hurt us too much. No, that's not what you said. Come on, be honest with me before I have my big buddy over here pull whatever's in the back of your neck out. (laughs) All right, let's go ahead and do this. Um, Let's take a look at you, Jenny. I want to do, I think this is going to be a willpower roll. It is. Yeah, I think this is a willpower roll. I have a D6 plus eight. Oh, you've got eight willpower. Very nice. (laughs) That's why I was very just going for it. <laughs> with the wave of vermin that are. <laughs> oh, that's right. The rats are behind her. I didn't even think about that. All right, my I have henchmen a have a whopping three willpower. So you ended up with a ten. Ooh, versus my nine. They wow. almost tried. They so, almost. So you have you have a success. So the um, um, okay, like, so. So Blood Diamond told us that that all we had to do was like get into the bank and 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 and, and cause a big ruckus. He said, and Blood Diamond said, none of us were going to be hurt. And and she's got blood coming down. And she goes, and she can't touch it because she's tied up. She's like, but but I, I'm hurting real bad. And so this is not this was not the plan. I bet. Uh how much did they pay you and how did they get you the money? We haven't even... Ashley kind of walks up and, and walks around. She's also kind of casually looking to see if there's any like money that might have dropped that she can just mop and walk out with. So there's the there's the classic at the end of a bank robbery, like couple dollar bills kind of <laughs> mm-hmm. cascading. Oh, down yeah. From oh, the yeah. Sky. That's if she starts I just right. bought us lunch. Uh, <laughs> That's crappy. Take the money. What? That's it's crappy, fine. Ashley. That's a trap. It's, it's a tip at that point. Like, come on. So I look back at the. So so tell me about the little uh, procedure you had on the back of your neck. So genuinely, they look at you. What procedure? Huh. Y'all know you got scars back here, right? What? Have you missed time at any point? Like woken up and didn't remember the past few hours, feeling a little sore. Do you remember when we, the guy guy turns to the to the to the woman and goes, you know, "We we did get pretty drunk, didn't we?" She's like, "Yeah, we we got real drunk." Hey hey ferryman, can you see if there, can you check to see if there's anything metal at the base of their neck without hurting them? <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice caveat. I think. Right. <laughs> Actually, you know who I think I because I, I, I don't imagine ferryman being able to pull that metal out. What, what, what were you thinking? Oh, I was I, just wondering if he could detect it. Yeah, yeah, you can detect it if there's metal in there. Yep. Uh, let's set uh, difficulty three. Okay. Against your uh, control. to the seven so not only can you sense that there's metal but you can sense that it's kind of curved onto the back of the spine and you can also tell that it's a couple different alloys so it's not just one piece of metal this is very complicated and yes there is something in there i forgot to say that first are you dying 
just casually asking all 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 five of them. I hope not. Okay. Are you gonna kill us? No. My job is to not do that. But apparently you got a little thing implanted in you. And you, you can see him kind of struggling, trying to like reach the hand up, but they just can't run. Well, and they're kind of the the other three are still knocked out. The guy's trying to look at the, at the other woman behind her neck, and she's like, "Can you see it? Can you see?" He's like, "No, I can't. I can't." If I let you go, will you promise not to run? Uh, sh- uh sure. <laughs> Uh, I pull out actually my phone and I take a picture of the back of his neck and then I kind of flip the screen around and be like, see, not even the best photo manip artist could That's do that. That's a picture that of Brad Pitt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bye daddy. Uh... Oh, whoa. Yeah. I don't know. Jesus. What the hell's going on? Have I'm you been pretty sure. More recently? No. I mean, I, 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 we had headaches. Remember the headaches? Yeah, I, I've been having headaches too. Was it since we got drunk? Yeah, it was since we. It's like two days now. Y'all are some quick healers. Uh, she's like looking at the scar and like touching it. And that definitely, that's a scar that would not have healed in two days. Yeah. But could if there was uh, a super involved. So, these guys are obviously patsies. And they have had something put into their head. And, like, I don't want to think, like, Battle Royale, but, like, Oh It'd yeah, same, a, same right there. Yeah, very like, easy way to clean things up. So, <laughs> would with that success, would Ferryman be able to draw the device? It depends. It depends. Okay. So you could tell that it was connected to the spine. Mm-hmm. Right. So I would need at least a, a major success. So like a plus three, I'm guessing my difficulty would be close to five or six. And if it's, if it's anything negative, if you have any level of failure, you'll kill them. Oh no, I, I not, not draw it out as in like draw a picture of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can draw kind of a shape of it. Sure. <laughs> Goodness, maybe no. use some, maybe use some like, clay what? and make a mold. <laughs> Fairman's getting dark fast. <laughs> it worked with the guns. I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> yeah, you could draw kind of like the general shape of it. Um, but it, I don't know if in any way it would reveal what it is, if that makes any okay. sense. Well, if we know if we know someone smarter than us, it might come in handy. So just, <gasps> we no, could ask our biology out. teacher. <gasps> Yeah, like she's one of the smartest people I know. Are we that's supposed that's to a be... great idea. Are we supposed to be talking about that in front of these two? <laughs> I didn't say names. Holy shit, I think they're kids. Actually, <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> like Dax Jesus. one of them and tries to knock him out. Like <laughs> The woman's like, uh, I didn't hear anything. She puts her head down. <laughs> Smart. What are we going to do with these guys? Like, I don't... I think they were patsies. I think they were set up. I think they've learned a lesson. I think they were still trying to rob the bank. <laughs> that is a crime. Yeah. Turn them over to the police. Okay. Yeah, that seems like a plan, right? Well... I didn't we'll say it was back out front. Again, I didn't, I didn't say, say it was a good plan. plan. It is a, it it is like a plan. plan. <laughs> I feel like that's our group's tagline. Didn't say it was a good plan. <laughs> so, Ferryman, do you pick him up? Yeah. Being so, gentle. One handed. Just grab the bar that uh, Diamond wrapped around him, pick him up. You head up to the front uh, uh, where the police are uh, at the front of the bank. As you're there, you see huge crowd now around Diamond. She's still at the top of the steps, and she's talking to reporters. And um, she says, 
And of course, I'm assuming the three of you are behind. So you guys are going to hear this as well. She goes, no, no, I know. I, I, when, as soon as I arrived, I saw exactly what was happening. I saw I saw uh, the notorious blood diamond was breaking in through the uh, uh, into the vault, but it hadn't he hadn't gotten through yet. And with just a swift punch, I was able to come down there and take out everybody. Uh, you'll notice in there, there's a lot of guns. I took all their guns and I crushed them so nobody could use them. And I Liar. Knocked, out, knocked out Blood Diamond. Liar. Say, do we want to call bullshit now or later? Like she, Ashley leans over to her sister to, to <laughs> ask Liar. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> bullshit. I'm going to find a police officer to hand over these bad guys. So, Fairy, when you come over and like one of the cops is like, whoa. Like, <laughs> and you're kind of carrying them and you drop them off and he's like, oh, thanks. You're uh, welcome. You're new. Yes. What, what do you call yourself? I am the ferryman. You should have a scarier name. But thanks. <laughs> That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. You're very scary. I am sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Todd's just our cinnamon roll, I and just, I just want to protect him. Todd is just such a, just a sweet babu. <laughs> but yeah, I'm heckling Diamond still. So, uh, for the what... patriarchy. Anybody ever notice that Diamond and Blood Diamond are really close? So I'm just saying, one word difference. Nobody like there's a deep enough crowd and enough going on that like where Diamond is right and kind of the crowd around nobody could possibly hear you as as you know she's yelling and then shouting, but a uh, young kid with a, a, a camera comes up and is like, can, can can I take your picture? Who's he saying that to? It's the four of you. Oh, oh. I'm back. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she uh, Ashley launches herself into the air and like. Does a full superhero, <laughs> superhero pose. pose, right? Like, Holy Absolutely, cow. citizen. And I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> and he, he looks. He looks at you, Jenny. Goes, uh, you're, you're a good guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and turns to make and goes, dude, the costume is dope. <laughs> Thank you, citizen. <laughs> Takes some pictures and he goes, now did you capture him? Is he one of the bad guys? He's pointing to Ferryman. No, this guy's the, this guy's one of the best good guys. He's like um, like a uh, like uh, Mr. Hellmouth Man, the guy you know, the guy who keeps rescuing all those kids. Like he just he looks scary, but he's totally fine. This is so cool. She's just just take, taking a whole bunch of pictures. What do you guys call yourselves? Superheroes. <laughs> you need to come up with a better name. He's so he goes, new to this. Plane of existence. Did you yeah, guys he's watch, an alien. Did you guys watch Diamond as she as she as she thwarted the entire bank robbery? No, we did that. That was you, us. You robbed did the bank? No. no. No, no, we did not rob the bank. We stopped the bank robbers. And then Diamond came in and just took all the credit. Oh, oh, that reminds me. We should probably go tell the police that the back of the bank is open. <laughs> They'll see it. Jimmy, are you saying they got away with the money? Looks like it looks like Diamond did not actually solve the crime. Holy cow. Can I write a story? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so he starts asking you a bunch of inane questions. No. Um, there's no such thing as bad publicity. He's writing down stuff on his, and he does pull out a notebook. Unlike any of the other reporters, he actually has a little flip notebook with a pencil. If he's 17, he's 14. You you got a podcast, kid? I, no, it's, it's a blog. A it's blog. A blog. Okay. It's called Ultra City Capes. Oh, cool. I'm starting a bo blog about the bogs in the area. A, a bog blog? Yep. Oh, that. Now, see, you should have her come up with the names because that's a cool name. You know what? I, I leave all that branding stuff to Mako. He's way better. I mean, look at his outfit. 
He's way better at this branding stuff than I am. It, he looks so cool. He's like, he's like, like super strong, and he's got like fins and like the blues, and he looks super cool. Like, like he he doesn't look like Eel Boy because Eel Boy is a dork and he can't do nothing. Like that looks super cool. <laughs> doesn't he just like make slime? Isn't that like his whole thing? Like Eel Boy just makes slime. I don't know what he's Eel slippery. Boy does. <laughs> it's gross. I just you know, know he's Eel Boy, and nobody wants yeah. to be no nobody wants him to be the sidekick. It's because he's slimy. No, That's I think answer. Eel Boy is perfectly fine. I would love to meet Eel Boy and have a nice talk because you know what, slime can be helpful. I heard he smells as like the basement. slime in her hair. Could you do me a favor? Could you send those pictures to me? Like, do you have? A, do you guys have a website? Oh, um, just, just, um, just, just airdrop them to me. Like, here. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to the airdrop and he goes, he goes, okay. And he sends, he sends the pictures to you. Ah, uh, y'all look at this. We look so good. She like holds up the pictures or, specifically for Todd to see. Very good. Yes. Were we going to talk to the officer about the bank robbery? I think Mako would be the would be <laughs> all that. you. That's you, boy wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Our parents told us not to talk to cops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness! So we want to a tell them that the back door is open and b ask them for any information. Do we think they're going to give it to us? That's what we're going to do. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up to an officer who looks not the same one who told me to go away, but is maybe second in charge. Mm -hmm. The one that <laughs> called me scary. <laughs> Let's go with that one. <laughs> and, Sergeant uh, Davis, or uh, no, Officer Davis. Officer Davis, and uh, and I'll ask him. I'll let him know a that the uh, that the back door is open, and also that the the money appears to be gone. And uh, and ask him if, what, if gosh, I guess there's, he's not going to have any more information. He's just been sitting out front. What should I ask him about? Any thoughts? Uh, any? Contact information for Diamond and her Super League. Is that something? Yeah, sure. Why not? I'll ask him that. <laughs> so a uh, couple things. One, as, as you kind of start the conversation with uh, Officer Davis, we see Diamond kind of start to take off. She goes, good citizens of Ultra City, just remember, crime doesn't have to... Oh, what does she say? I need a tagline. What's it? Help me out. What's, it, what's, what's Diamond's tagline? Right. Crime doesn't have to pay? Is that right? No, it's got to be something with diamonds or shiny or hard. or What's a good tagline? Diamonds uh, are a city's best friend? No. I, okay, that's, that, I, I'm good with that. Anybody got it's something an better? option. Uh, <laughs> it's a good option. It's a good option. <laughs> Oh, uh, crime will find me as uh, tough as diamonds. Okay, <laughs> that's what we've got. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, great. I don't think she'd have a good tagline, but that's all. I, I, I'm she, not I a diamond fan. Tagline when you've got a boob window. She, <laughs> she, she kind of flies Hell up, here. she's up like four or five feet, and she turns and she goes, Just remember, diamond is Ultra City's best friend. <laughs> She flies off quick as you're having that conversation. And everybody's like, oh. I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mako, you're having this conversation with Officer Davis. What do you tell him? Uh, that that uh, it looks like the money's gone and that the back door's uh, busted open. And ask him if he can give us any information on contacting... Uh, Diamond and her super friends. So uh, Diamond works by herself. So she's not she's not part of any type of super group. She's relatively new to the city. This is all stuff that you know, especially you. Uh, Dylan. Sure. Um, she's relatively new to the city. Only been here maybe a year or so, and like has completely like become the most popular superhero in all of Ultra City since All Star has left like everybody else is dwarfed in her popularity. She always seems to be right there where she's supposed to be thwarting crime, 
always talks to all the reporters, does TV spots all the time, shows up on radio shows and podcasts. Uh, she's got a whole website and a publicist and everything. Um, you know, and he kind of he, he kind of gives you some of that information, some of that stuff you already knew. And he doesn't react to the fact that the the money's gone. Oh all. yeah, he, like he's like, oh, I can't believe that. I can't believe they got away with the money. You know, he asks you if you saw anything, which obviously you didn't. We saw that there was money. Or, uh, I mean, did we see if the vault uh, looked untouched when the door fell? Oh no, it looked like the doors were open. Right? Was that the description given, or yes? Yeah, so let's the dust let's settled. Let's go a little bit backwards in time. So you guys were at the very beginning. You were behind the uh, the bank, right? Mm -hmm. And you had uh, ferryman uh, metal control to bring the the door down. There was no hole then, All right? So the back the back of the bank was intact. Then Green uh, Jenny notices as she co uh, comes through, and then ferryman notices as well. Just collectively, you guys figure out one: the hole was not made by Diamond throwing these five people through the back of the vault. The hole, the hole was made some other way. Okay. Um, and the vault has been cleaned out. So it wasn't a situation where the, the vault was, you know, everything was kept and you kind of pulled a drawer open and you realized mm -hmm. that all the safes and everything's were all empty. All the safe doors were open. All of the safety, uh, the, the deposit box and everything's are wide open. So it looked like somebody came in, cleaned out the place. But when yeah. we, <clears throat> when Jenny punched blood diamond into the door and the door fell in did we see any of that then the, it, it did not look like the way jenny saw it later okay. so that's yeah. what i was wondering yeah sorry yeah. i misunderstood the question <clears throat> tell them that part that was fast yeah it must <laughs> it must have happened between when she knocked blood diamond uh through the door and the and it collapsed down and when the kind of the dust settled yeah, we'll let him know that that. Okay. I don't know and how he he'll know down, what that he means. He believes you. You know, he kind of asks you some probing questions just to make sure you're not a part of it. Um, but you're you're an innocent, innocent kid. Also, and... also, uh, the 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 bank robbers have something planted like on them. <clears throat> that does seem like a thing we should that at least let them know. That they don't know about. Yeah, uh, the whole officers. neck thing that they all got hammered and all of a sudden woke up with, you know, Removing it, neck. removing it would definitely kill them. I recommend not doing that. So he's <laughs> he's like, okay, okay. He's like taking this all down. He's typing it into his phone. So yeah, bye. And I just walk. <laughs> <laughs> no, no tagline for you. Here to help. <laughs> no, I don't have one yet. <laughs> so. We very briefly cut to the next page. The next page. We turn the page to the next page, and we go to the new panel. And the new panel is the interior of the uh, pizza shop. It's actually in the back, in the kitchen, and the dishwasher is there with this pizza. That's half pepperoni, half uh, ham, and uh, uh, pineapple, and you just see him eating pizza. <laughs> Sad. Next panel cuts back to you. <laughs> you know what i want to go to my 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 swamp of solitude your what <laughs> solitude my swamp of solitude that that retention pond that's overgrown in the back of the school the one that's opposite side of the campus from the pretty fountain yep well, we're not so we know pizza. we know where jenny's headed I think we're going to have to get pizza another day. Oh. Okay. I'm going to head back to the house. You want to come with me, Todd? Sure. Okay, come on. Jenny was quite grumpy as she leaves, by the way. <laughs> you just walk down the street like this. Good rat <laughs> hustle. Yeah, are the rats still with you or have you dispersed them? Jenny? I dispersed <laughs> them. <laughs> So I see, we see fairy, Ferryman and Shrinking Violet. Are we going to change before we get home? And if so, where and how? Or Gas station bathroom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to figure out a better way for this man. Like, as she comes out, she's just like, I've 
everything is disgusting. I think I caught something in there, and I've got to find a better way to change. Um, <laughs> Ultra City clearly needs more phone booths. Mm. The ferryman will leave about 100 pounds of fresh mud on the floor of the bathroom. And, and, and Ashley sees this as, as Todd leaves, and, and he's kind of like, does this look good? And you can see as the door opens and slams, you just see this huge pile of freaking mud in the middle of this bathroom of this bodega. What did you... Never mind, let's go. I changed. I slap a five on the counter, and we and we bounce. <laughs> What's Mako doing? Oh, I think Mako's headed home, too, then. Sounds like we're calling it an evening. We've we've almost thwarted a crime. <laughs> so Ashley and Todd. Where where Ashley, where do you live? So the house that uh that Ashley and Jennifer live in is actually um owned by like uh, their parents, obviously. Uh their parents are well off. Uh, which means that they are cold and they are not invested in, in their family very much uh, because their dad is, is traveling constantly and their mom is like off doing business stuff. So they largely have the house to themselves a lot of the time. Uh, they have put Todd up in the basement uh, when the two of them brought Todd home as a foreign exchange student. Uh, they basically went, looked at each other, shrugged and went, we'll take the tax right off. And uh, installed Todd in the on the uh, guest suite downstairs. So are you full on like burbs? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Like the nice part of the burbs in, in gotcha. The city. So like real nice neighborhood, like five thousand mm-hmm. square foot. Yeah, like big house. Like okay, big house. And what are your parents' names? Uh, um, Richard and Crystal. Thank you. Yep, Rich. <laughs> Well, okay, so Crystal is actually the stepmom. Nice. Yeah, our mom died in childbirth. Yes. Ooh, that's dark, okay. <laughs> and we're, we're twins. Oh, are we twins now? We're fraternal twins, but we're twins. Sure, all right. We're in the same grade. One of us yeah, either no. got held back or... Oh, I was... So, <laughs> so and, and I'm, I'm going to... This is a leading question, but it's a question I have to ask. What's the age gap between Richard and Crystal? It's not bad. Uncomfortable. No, it's not bad. I would say it's not bad. I would say that Richard is about 50 and Crystal's about 40. Okay. So 10 so, year, year age difference, but it's not like he, they started dating when she was 20. God. Mm-hmm. All right. 10 years. 10 years is, is pushing it, right? A little bit pushing it. It's and... slightly uncomfortable, but not like overwhelming. Like God. it's it's it, within the half year age plus seven rule. <laughs> So, um, let's see, we went, it was, so school was out at like three 30, uh, it took you, let's say about 30 minutes to get to the pizza shop. So I'm imagining after all is said and done, maybe, uh, the Uber is dropping you off at the house, say about, uh, five 30 ish. And two of you walk up to the house. Um, obviously don't need to lock the door in this neighborhood. Right. So you no, go right, no. right in the front door. Uh, we see Crystal at the um, uh, on the granite uh, kitchen counter. You see her leaving over. She's on the phone like she always is. She's like, I know, I know. And she's got a uh, glass of wine. It's got just a couple sips left in it. You look to the right. You see the the um, Chardonnay uh, bottle. It's about two thirds uh, empty. And you walk in, and she kind of looks over, and she just kind of gives you kind of a wave. I just kind of brush her off and head downstairs to the basement. Because we just all hang out in Todd's room. Because Todd doesn't actually need a room, so this is just an extra place for us to be. (laughs) I'm imagining, like, there's, like, the foosball tables down there that nobody uses, the pool tables down there that nobody uses. yeah, yeah. And, like, like... Richard bought, like, a big screen TV when big screen TVs just came out, so it's this huge hulking big screen tv that like can't handle any type of picture whatsoever it's all down there oh is it a crt <laughs> yeah exactly oh, <laughs> exactly and literally only 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 ferryman could possibly lift that thing uh it's more <laughs> more cabinet than tv 
All right, let's cut to Dylan. Dylan, where where is home? Uh, so I don't think that Dylan lives in quite as fancy a neighborhood, uh, but it's, you know, in, in the burbs, just a, a regular, you know, small house uh, with his parents and and his brother, Brandon. What's your relationship with Brandon? Uh, we, you know, I think, I think that we're, we're both a little jealous of each other. I think that he's, he's a lot more bookish than I am and, and he's a lot less outgoing than I am and he's a bit younger and, and, uh, so we, we, we just, we rub each other the wrong way. So it's pr- pretty obvious why Brandon would be kind of jealous of you. You're super popular at school. You're very successful at sports and things like that. Why are you kind of. Well, I think it's because uh, he's he's always gotten the better grades and, and our and our folks are always, you know, uh, applauding him for that and telling me that I should study harder and those kind of things. Is he older or younger? Uh, he's younger. OK. And talk, talk to me about your parent or parents. Uh, gosh, I didn't come up with a name for them. I had a name for them, but I had a different name. <laughs> um, what are their names? Uh, let's go with Brett and Barbara, because why Brett wouldn't they Barbara. be Brett and Barbara? And uh, is, is this your, are they your, um, like genetic parents? Like Barbara gave birth to you? Oh, uh, I think that, uh, Dylan knows he's adopted. Oh, okay. You're adopted. Got it. What's your relationship with your parents? I think it's pretty good. Pretty average. How are they as parents? Uh, I think they're good. They're good. All right. So you get, you, you get, uh, hot. So how do you get from the bank all the way out to your part of the burbs? It's a great question. Uh, clearly I have to change back. <laughs> I should have uh, a podcast. I ask good questions. Same exact bodega. <laughs> The same exact bodega. There's that forty like pounds of blood on the floor for some reason. <laughs> so I don't. I I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm just gonna jet myself along and in costume, and then tuck behind the house and and sneak into my window. Oh, okay. And I won't change. All right. So you're you're back in the window, and. Finally, kind of, where, where do you hide your suit? <sighs> where do hurry. I hide? Uh, in, in, the, in a box in the back of my closet. All right, so you're just closing the box, and you hear the, Dylan, Dylan, can I come yes. in? Sure. Do you need a minute, or can I just come in? I'm all dressed, right? I'm ready. Yeah, I think that's fine. So she kind of like tentatively opens the door and she's like, okay, did, did, so coach called and, and said you didn't go to practice. Uh, yeah, we ended up taking Todd out for pizza. Todd? Um, Todd, uh, the new exchange student from Wales. Oh, your friend from your trip? Yes. And he told you to skip practice? Uh, we, gosh, I forgot we had practice first day. Well, you better, co- you, you're going to need to talk to coach. Coach was, he sounded pretty annoyed. I'll do that, Ma. I'll talk to him tomorrow. Okay. And where's your book bag? Where is my book bag? Uh, I'm going to say I left it, (laughs) I I left it in my locker. Dylan, we can't keep doing this. You have to bring it home. I told you all homework has to be, you have to bring the homework sheet to me. It has to be signed by each of the teachers. Yeah, Ma, I know. Last day, day. this is the last time. It's the first day of school, Dylan. There's no homework. It's the first day. I know this makes you mad, but I don't have to do this with Brandon. Yeah, I know. I know. So what are we going to do tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we're going to we're going to talk to the coach and then we're going to get our homework signed. 
So you're going to do tonight's homework and tomorrow's homework, and I want it shined by each of your teachers. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I won't. I'm not going to bring it up to Dad. But, and let, but you know that Dad Dad told you, you he'll take you off that swim team. I know. I know. All right. Let's cut to kind of this. So we've got kind of the main in the back of the school, we've got this beautiful, beautiful like pond and it's got, you know, uh, this beautiful stonework um, uh, that's, that's built around and this beautiful sculpture of this goose in the center with the water coming out of the goose's bill. And very few people have noticed kind of the drainage system that, that fills and filters this out and where the water comes back out, filters farther back behind kind of the uh, utility building of the school. And back there, there's kind of just like this dumping of the water that comes from the fountain. And it's kind of a marsh, kind of like just wet. And sometimes, you know, depending on the water levels, it's there. And uh, we see, we see, do we see Jennifer or do we see Jenny? We see Jennifer. All right. So Jennifer, you, you get to kind of your spot. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Uh, I just, I take off my shoes, uh, dig my feet, my feet into the, uh mud and i just sigh and sit and contemplate what happened and like what could be going on with with these super villains and superheroes and yeah um and her being asked if she's a good guy uh so yeah she's just trying to have some solitude and, and work through her brain and all this newness so I've got a feeling, Jen, uh, Jennifer, and this doesn't have to be true, so don't you don't have to say mm -hmm. yes to this, but I have got a feeling there's something that lives in this little marsh area that's become almost a pet for you, and I'm curious to know what that is. Can it be a possum? I love it. I love it. So you kind of, yeah, you kind of get your feet in there, kind of, kind of deep in there, and you... As you're there, you're kind of looking in in, in the bush because because uh, he or she, she she wants to stay. She likes to stay when it's dark. But you see her little snout come out and kind of kind of look at you. And what do you call her? Uh, I call her uh, Daisy. Daisy. Mm -hmm. So Daisy gives you a look, and you know what this look is like. Is are you okay? I I pull a little piece of food out and hold it. Bring her, lure her over, and I kind of. Pet her, touch, play with her little hands. And she curls right up. Like she, mm -hmm. she's not tentative or scared at you at all. And she, she takes her little possum hands and she's, you know, go ahead and just eats all of the food. Yay. And it makes me feel better. And that is the end of issue one. Now you're going to want to stay tuned for my understanding. Issue two is going to be released in three weeks. So that is going to put us on Tuesday. October 26 at the same time, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to jump to credits on the other side of the credits. We're going to talk to the cast. We'll be right back.
so you never know what's going to happen. Um, and I got to like to pull back the curtain a little bit. Um, this is the most, and this is purposeful, the most unprepared I've ever been for a session on the stream. Like I purposely jotted a few notes down, just a few ideas. And after interact, like after, you know, God, Doug, how many, we had what, 13 sessions, I think of Star Wars or something like that. Yeah, 13. And Jim, I think between online and offline, we've, you and I have played together at least that long. And it, I had immediate, uh, Kimberly I've known for a while, but I had immediate chemistry with both Kimberly and, 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 and Kirsten. And I just felt like, you know what? I think this is just like a situation where if I just have a couple notes, like I think that the cast is going to carry it. And it, I, I felt that way. I felt like we had, we told a good story. Um, so uh, I'll start with you, Kristen. This is the first time that you've played. Now, have you and Kimberly role played together before? We have. Uh, Kimberly and I have known each other for a while. Uh, we actually met through role playing. So no kidding. Yeah, uh, we we met playing dork sports. Uh, That's and, what we call a parlor larp. Yeah, it's, so we've been <laughs> we've been parlor larping for a long time together. Uh, nice. So, you know, being able to play sisters was just like an immediate. This this will work very well. So, excellent, excellent. So I'd be curious. Um, uh, thank you, Richard. That's very nice of you to say. Um, I'd be curious, like from a genre perspective, how does this compare to other other ones that you tend to uh, play, other R RPGs? Uh, so it's been fun kind of creating the story a little bit because we've been kind of going with the background and we, we had some loose ideas for the background, but just making things up as it goes and just having that build on each other has just been so much fun. Like, and that's very different from other, like, again, like you were saying, you prepare and prepare and prepare for other games. And this one, it was like, all right, so we're going to roll up this character, try and figure out what, <laughs> what these powers mean uh, and build something around that. And it's just been a really, really interesting creation process. And like this first session, I think really helped a lot of, like helped us find our voices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, and I got to say like all four of you jumped right into the skin immediately, which I think is cool. And I, you know, it's one of those things too. And I think that um, we saw this is that, you know, we can, we can write four page backstories on all of these characters, but once they all interact with each other, like everything changes. And I really kind of dug the fact that we put some frameworks around some of these, but I feel like we're all going to find out their story. Like we're all together going to see what's happening here. How about for you, Kimberly, is this a different genre from you? What is, what is um, your normal role-playing genre? So the LARP, that part of the LARP that Kirsten referred to, they are mostly like World of Darkness. So there's that whole like, uh, what is it called? Goth punk yep. um, vibe to it. And honestly, it's we also tend to do games that are, are what is known as hype too fun, which is uh, I'm going to be emotionally wrecked. Uh, so it's nice to have what playing a game that is what we call type one fun, which is you can have the drama, you can have the tears, but ultimately it is you feel good at the end instead of a oh I've been emotionally run through the ringer. So I'm super happy to to be able to dive in and be a snarky teenager and just have fun with it. Well, and and Kimberly, you're not the only one, but I think everybody did a great time like did a, did a great job table sourcing the world right and I, I think everybody did a great job answering the questions and let, let's make this world together i really enjoyed that yeah. um, and i think you need experienced our role players that can kind of go with that because i think for newer role players that can be a little intimidating so gms that are watching be a little careful with that um but when you have an experienced group like this it's a ton of fun to like build the world together um so Jen, this is definitely different than any like we've played Forbidden Lands together. You know, we, we've this played is not some, Forbidden like, Lands, <laughs> some, some dark shit. Um, how? Do, first of all, did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was great. What did you uh, like about it that was different? So what struck me was, you know, at the very beginning of of the 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 encounter scene where it's like I was my my initial thought was, well, we have to avoid the cops and sneak into the building, and then like after we sent you know, violent. And I was like, wait a minute, I don't have to avoid the cops. I'm a superhero. I fly down and I go, Hey, I'm here. You're going to work with me. 
that's the whole point. <laughs> and so that was kind of fun that it was like, no, no, I don't, I don't have to sneak into the building and make sure that nothing gets broken because I, that's just what happens in, in comic books. It's, you know, the bank's going to be totaled at the end of this thing. Right. You know, uh, all of that scene with, with diamond, right. She busts in the top, tears up the walls and throws the guys around and goes, I did it. I solved the crime. And it's like, the building is totaled, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, it is, and I don't know if this is the first time you've done this, Jim, but I think it's the first time you and I have done this kind of the um, out of the action role playing, right? So the interaction with the, your your buddy yeah. in the hallway and your interaction with your parents. And sometimes, especially, you know, if you're not used to it, that can be like tough, but I did not like you jumped right in, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, that's in interesting uh like you said we haven't really had to do or we haven't really done that much of that so that's very cool yeah but you felt comfortable with it because yeah. it sure looked like it okay. yeah very cool how's doug hi <laughs> so I, I can already tell that todd is becoming a favorite we saw it in the chat we saw it, your fellow cast members slowly Plus, for everybody falling in love with poor todd um oh, todd. And he's a I good love, boy i love the people watching are getting little morsels of what happened over the summer. Um, I like the slow reveal we're doing, and it's just kind of naturally unfolding who Todd is and what happened in the summer. So I really want to keep that going as a cast because I think it's very, hopefully very interesting for the audience to kind of, without just saying, you know, this huge exposition of, you know, they went to Wales over the summer and this happened. So I'm, I'm totally digging this. How is this versus Star Wars? Well, uh, I'm talking less. You're Quite not the face. Less. Yeah. <laughs> uh, less, less prone to violence. Um, no, it's 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 a pretty pretty different character, which I am enjoying the never loving crap out of. And I think the best part is that uh, I'm learning who the character is alongside Todd, who is also learning who the character is. What do you? If this is for the four of you, what's next? pizza <laughs> i get her i want to i want to take down i want to take down diamond like that that's my big goal because there's like, definitely something going on with her right like that's, yeah there's no like, way she's not like pure she's dead manu- nasty evil like, like she's manufacturing crime so that she can be the hero somehow maybe that's bad that's how you get your name out there you know it's actually a decent strategy we could no. we could workshop maybe we're not robbing things i, I <laughs> absolutely love how mako has declared it mako has declared himself the team leader but we are obviously being drug around by the sisters <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fantastic that's fantastic all right uh so we'll see everybody in three weeks um and thank you to all of you um real quick uh, one of the benefits of being a patron of Third Floor Wars is you get an opportunity to play in these games. As if you've been watching the stream and watching us on YouTube, you know that we're doing new games all of the time. So uh, for those of you that have an extra dollar a month, uh, that's the minimum. Uh, you can become a patron over patron uh, Patreon. Uh, real quick, uh, Doug, you got any plugs? Uh, hi, I'm Doug from Steam Powered Scoundrels. It's a Malifaux-based podcast that talks about the game sometimes and mostly like who's got the best butts or who's kissing. Um, check us out on whatever podcatcher you like. Run most of them. And how about you, Kirsten? Any shout outs or plugs? Not really. Uh, shout out to my fiance that I'm marrying in 11 days, uh, who is the best human I know. So, hey, and baby. Thank you for making time for this because this is this time is the worst. Like, your day is going to be amazing and being married is amazing, but mm-hmm. all of this right now freaking blows. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, no, everybody highly recommend do not get married in a pandemic. Do not do yeah. it. Uh, yeah, wait until it's over and then do it safely so you don't, yeah, so you don't have to go through all that. I had a Kimberly, cousin. do you have any plugs or shout outs? Okay. Uh, shout out to Kirsten's uh, wonderful fiance, Ren, because I am their best person in, in, nice. the, next, in, in the wedding. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you to my wonderful partner, Taylor, uh, and my other one, Mickey, for helping manage dinner while I was trying to make this work. Also, uh, I work for Weird Miniatures, and if you want to see people paint 
little plastic people. Uh, check out twitch.tv slash play weird. We do two streams a day. What's amazing about the stream that you're running, uh, Kimberly, is I'm what, and this is what I'm loving is I'm getting multiple different levels uh, from the. So you guys have did a wonderful job of getting a, an array of talent yeah. and different painting levels, and it has been fantastic. And it, it feels like it's like 24 hours a day because you guys have so many different people coming on, and it's different than any other Twitch channel I've seen for painting tutorials because typically it's. And this is not a bad thing, but it's typically one person, right? And and you get to see the same person painting over and over again. What you guys at Weird are doing is, is fantastic. And Kimberly, you're doing just yeoman's work, uh, making Thank that you. happen every day. Outstanding, right. outstanding work. All right, so Jim. Yes, sir. Do you have any shout outs or plugs? Um, Three Men in a War Game. Uh, they're, they're, they're a great podcast that everybody should listen to. They have a super cool, cool Discord. Lots of fun. What are you doing next week? Uh, next week I'm going camping. Yeah, we are. That's right, camping for gamers. It's gonna be camping great for gamers. All right. Um, thanks for all of the follows. I saw them as they came through. I really appreciate it. Uh, within three weeks we should have an intro, um, like you're used to seeing here on the stream, and we should also have the last of our team pieced together and drawn up uh, by George, who's just doing an amazing job um, uh, putting this together. So Kirsten is the one that hooked me up with George. It's not the last time you're going to see George's work here on the stream. Um, for those of you that, that sat and watched of... this whole, oh, he's so good. Or they're, they're yeah, so good. Yeah, they're There's... so good. Uh, they're uh, on Instagram and on uh, Twitter at Crip Trash. Yep, so and you can see R Y P T T R A S H. And here on the overlay in the bottom left hand corner, you can see that. Um, so, and I asked George if they were taking commissions, and they are. So, um, any of the streamers out there that happen to catch this, um, uh, George just does, just does absolutely amazing work. Uh, for those of you watching the recording, give me a like and follow. If you're on Twitch and you're still here, give me a little quick follow. But uh, this was a ton of fun. I appreciate it. Take care, everybody.